Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Pavit Aike. Hope you are all doing good. Today's topic is on the usage of uh, trigger points in production order. So basically, the trigger points uh, it can be used in order to trigger a follow-up event uh, or a follow-up action whenever a, a certain activity has been uh, triggered in the production order. So these are the six criteria where the trigger points can be assigned uh, or maybe uh, used uh, while processing the production orders. So these trigger points will basically be assigned uh, in the routing. Uh, we will have a brief uh, intro about the subtopics on the usage of the trigger points. So the first thing is on the release of the succeeding operations. So with this function, you can basically release all operations that follow the operation which has the trigger point assigned to it and then we have the release up to stop indicator and with this function you can actually release all operations up to a specific point including uh, the next operation for which the release stop indicator has been set then we have uh, the release preceding operations so here we can basically release all preceding operations uh, before the operation to which the uh, trigger point has actually been assigned to and then we have uh, the create order by copying. So here we can create uh, a new production order without the reference of a, a material by just copying uh, a reference operation set. And then we have insert reference operation set. So here we can basically insert a reference operation set into an existing production order. And in order to enable this function, we must uh, basically enter the operation between which uh, we would like to insert the reference operation set. So finally, we have the start workflow task. Uh, this can be used basically to trigger an email uh, to the uh, shop floor executive or the manager once uh, a rework operation has been triggered or maybe if there is any uh, confirmation uh, posted and the complete production has been done on that particular production order. So let's say if you are going to confirm the final operation, so then uh, an email could be triggered to the production manager or the supervisor saying that the uh, confirmations are. So let's get into SAP and uh, see how this basically works. Here uh, I'm in SAP. So the transaction that we basically use to create a trigger point is uh, CO31. So this is basically used to create a standard trigger point. So here I'm going to create uh, a trigger point uh, in order to uh, create a rework production order uh, if there is any uh, scrap observed during the confirmation process. For example, if the production order has a quantity of uh, 10 pieces and uh, out of which uh, I have only yielded uh, 7 pieces and the remaining 3 have been scrapped for some reason. But they could be reused uh, again uh, if we perform few rework activities. So in general uh, scenario, we basically create a rework order after the goods receipt has been completed and the quality checks are done. But by the usage of the uh, trigger points, as soon as you post the confirmation with the uh, rework quantity, uh, let's say the three in this case, so an uh, rework production order will be triggered upon saving the confirmation itself. So here I'm going to create the standard trigger point as uh, maybe I'll use it as a rework. and then I'm going to enter the description. So here we do have uh, these three fields. The first one, it basically it describes the uh, name of the trigger point and then we have the trigger point usage. So this usage basically it defines like uh, in which area can we actually assign this uh, trigger point into. So let's say uh, from the standard options, we do have the trigger point usages predefined here, but in case you need something else, we can also uh, customize the usage. So for now, I'm going to assign it to the FERT material. Uh, so this is the usage as a production. And in case you're going to group uh, the usages into a certain uh, groups of trigger points, then you can also assign a uh, trigger point group. So for now, I'm not going to use it. And then here uh, under the usage, uh, we do have uh, two uh, options, uh, 
for the trigger point functions and the release stop. So the release stop is basically used, I mean, uh, if you would like to release the first operation, like in the standard scenario, let's say we have like three operations in a production order. So as soon as we release the production order, all three operations will be released at the same time. But if you are going to assign this release stop here, and this trigger point has been assigned to the first operation, so only the first operation will be released, and the subsequent operations like operation 20 and 30, those will not be released. They will just uh, uh, sit with the status as uh, created. So in this case, I'm going to use the trigger point function. And then here we do have the trigger point functions. I mean, since I've selected this, I'm going to choose which function uh, I would like to use for this trigger point rework. So I am planning to create a, a rework order with reference of an a, a reference operation set. Okay, so I have selected this and then the system status. So once I mark the uh, status as uh, confirmed, like whenever we do the uh, confirmation of the operation, so the operation will have uh, a specific status, right? If it is finally confirmed, then we'll have uh, CNF. But if it is partially confirmed, we will have it as uh, PCNF. So I'm going to assign this particular function to the operation when the status has been uh, marked as PCNF. Okay, so I'm going to set this PCNF and then change. So under the change, we do have the reset status, status set and set, status set and reset. So now I'm going to assign the status change as set status. So which means that the status will be set uh, to this particular PCNF. So I'm going to assign that. And uh, we do have this other field for once. It means that this particular event or the creation of the order should only happen for once in the entire production order. So if you'd like to uh, enable this uh, option uh, as once, then only for one time the rework order will be created for the operations you have uh, assigned the uh, trigger point. So I'm going to use this once and then you have the final uh, option to activate the function. So here we do have three uh, options. One is that the function is activated based on the status and then the function is only activated manually and then the function is activated by status and also manually. So if I choose uh, the function is only activated manually, then we will have a pop-up appearing in the CO11 and transaction while posting the confirmation. So then it depends on the user whether he would like to uh, go with the rework production order or not. So for now, I'm going to use this function as one. Okay, that's it. And uh, I'm going to save it. Okay, and yeah. So now here, it is asking to enter the reference operation set. Why? Because uh, whenever we create a rework order, without the reference of any material, and we should definitely assign a, uh, a reference operation set which has the uh, subsequent uh, actions to be performed. So I'm going to search from this. So let's say I'm going to choose this particular uh, group which has the rework assembly and the order type for the rework, it could be based on your configuration. But for now, uh, I'm going to use the standard one. It's a PP03 and then continue. Okay, I have to assign the group counter. So that's it. Now we have the uh, trigger point rework created. So the next thing is basically, uh, we have to assign this trigger point uh, into the operation. So for that, I'm going into the routing CA01. And this is my material and plant. So the first one. So under this uh, operation, we can assign the trigger point. We also need to assign uh, an operation that basically 
uh, says that the uh, river cooperation is required. So PP01. And then I'm going to say it as to create the river order. So let's say in the first operation, this is our actual production process. Okay. So basically while confirming the first operation for the extrusion process, the Schaffler guy might observe a few discrepancies and he has decided to go with a rework order for a few uh, order quantities. So then he goes to the second operation and then he's going to confirm this second one saying that to create a rework order. And please note that we are not actually assigning any work center here but because this is only for the purpose to create a rework order uh, in the operation 20 uh, we should be assigning the a trigger point right so uh, i will have to go into the details of this 20 and once you are in it uh, you have to click on go to and then choose this option trigger point overview so from here we can basically select the trigger point uh, so this field is basically to assign the usage of that particular trigger point we just created. So the usage that I have assigned is the FERT, right? So I'm going to choose this FERT and then hit on enter. So now we will see this uh, pop-up screen if you would like to copy the standard trigger points and then click on yes. And then system will provide uh, us the complete list of uh, trigger points that we have assigned to this usage. Uh, FERT. So I'm going to select this. That's it. So then we have the trigger point assigned uh, to this particular operation 20. And then click on save. Okay. So now the master data setup is completed. So the next step is basically to create a production order. Go to CO01. Enter the material. And the order type, sorry. Let's say I'm going to use uh, 10 pieces here. And with the type of uh, scheduling as backwards, I will ha always have to enter the end date. Let's say 31 10 2022. And let me go into the details of the operation. So now we can see we have the new version uh, of the routing that has the uh, rework operation. So here, if you look at this particular column that says as a TP, which means for the trigger points, we do see a checkbox on, under the second operation. It means that the tr trigger point has been activated for uh, operation 20. So if I go into the details of 20 or maybe you, you can just uh, select the operation and then click on trigger points down below. It will show you the trigger point that has been assigned to it. Okay, so now let me release the production order so that we can post the confirmations. And these materials are batch managed. So now the release has been carried out. I'm going to click on save. So we have the production order 6305 created. So I'm going into a different screen and uh, directly I'm going to post the confirmation. So 6305. So now I'm going to choose the operation. So this is my actual operation, the first one. Okay, that's fine. So now here, uh, my yield quantity is expected to be 10 pieces, which is my order quantity. After guy, he observed that only seven are yielded properly and we have a requirement to rework three pieces out of the total. 10 order quantity and now he is going to set this as a partial confirmation but because the quantity is not completed here 
and now the software guy he knows that uh, a rework order should be created and then click on save so the confirmation is saved and again we go back to the c11 screen and then confirm the second operation right in the second operation we do see a yield of 7 which is basically coming from the previous operation 10. So he, in this operation, we are not actually yielding out anything, but we are just trying to create a rework order. So the scrap that has been generated or maybe the rework quantity that has been observed in the first operation is for three pieces. So now I'm going to enter the quantity as three in the rework and then choose the confirmation as partial confirmation. And when I click on save, you can see uh, a pop-up that has been triggered. It says that the operation has a trigger point function and should it be executed. And this is happening because uh, we have selected the option as manually, like uh, to trigger this particular event uh, manually upon uh, posting the confirmation, right? While creating the uh, trigger point. So it says that should such a function be executed, yes or no. So now I'm going to take the option as yes and you can see that this is the function so we are going to create an order a production order with reference of the operation set right now click on execute so this will be the trigger point and based on this particular order for the activity 20 or the operation 20. Now you can see that the confirmation has been posted. So in order to see the uh, production order that has been created with the order type as PQ03, I'm going to use the standard report, uh, CVOIS. And here, since we do not have a reference of any uh, material uh, in the production order, I'm going to just enter the plant 1000 and then the order type as PP03. So here we have uh, the production order that has been just created. If we take a look. So this is the uh, rework production order that has been created based on our confirmation. And you can see that the order quantity is three pieces. So which is our order, uh, I mean the rework quantity, right? And we can see that uh, the operation has also been assigned for the rework and this is coming based on the reference operation set that we have assigned in the trigger point right so in the same way you can basically create multiple trigger points uh, you know uh, based on the usage or the your requirement